Michael Mark. Yes. Rodney Kobos. Aye. Susan Granzella. Aye. Alan Guy. Aye. Jacob Lopez. Aye. Motion passes. All right. Thank you. So we're going to move on to strategic goal 2.2. And this is starting on page 14, kind of in the middle of our, of our book there. So this goal states, research the scope of unlicensed practice, evaluate allocated enforcement resources, and meet with industry stakeholders to review enforcement st strategies. We know from CSLB's pro proactive schemes and sweeps that unlicensed activity is widespread in California as it is elsewhere. But the full scope of unlicensed or underground activity is difficult to determine. Underground activity is by definition undocumented and unrecorded. Some prior studies have been conducted, including a 2015 study by the Little Hoover Commission but none of these have focused specifically on the construction industry. A preliminary, preliminary survey by CSLB staff found that an alarming 78% of online contractors' ads did not include a contractor's license as required by law. It is presume, presumed that many of these oper, operators are un, unlicensed. Industry leaders at the July 6th meeting were supportive of any and all CSLB efforts to co combat the underground ec economy. But without knowing the full size of the underground economy and construction, it is very difficult for CSLB management to determine whether our limited enforcement resources are being properly allocated. CSLB staff is there for recommending that an outside contractor be hired to conduct a study with two general objectives. To better assist the size of California's underground economy in the construction industry and review all CSLB enforcement operations and staffing to ensure public safety is optimized. A more sp specific scope of work proposed for the consultant study is found on page 15 of your packet. Uh, these items would include review prior research efforts and work with CSLB staff, industry representatives, and other sources to evaluate the size of the underground economy. Evaluate CSLB's reactive and, and proactive enforcement investigation needs. Determine whether existing CSLB enforcement re resources are properly allocated. Evaluate current production goals for staff examine enforcement division staff classifications to, to determine if they are appropriate for the work performed, prepare a written report on all findings and recommended appropriate changes. Staff have explored potential vendors and believe the cost of completing the proposed study would not exceed $75,000. This is a staff's recommendation to the enforcement committee. Recommend to the full board that up to $75,000 be authorized to hire a private consultant to accept, act, assess the CSLB enforcement operations and staffing as specified. Ms. Shelley, is there any public comment? Not seeing any requests for comment at this time. Committee members. Do you have any public comment on this staff recommendation? It looks like no committee members would like to weigh on this one. Is there a hand up from a Stephen Melton still? Uh, yeah, I don't believe he's lowered it. It's been up for a while. He was okay. our last commenter. Okay. So, um, committee members, is there a motion to approve the recommended staff 
recommendation? So move by Kobos. Yeah, motion by Kobos. Do we have a second? A second by Guy. Second by board member Guy. Mariah, can you please call roll? Michael Mark. Yes. Aye. Rodney Kobos. Aye. Susan Granzella. Aye. Alan Guy. Aye. Jacob Lopez. Aye. Motion passes. All right. Thank you, Mariah. And moving on to the next strategic goal, item 2.3. And this begins on page 16 of your packet. This strategic goal objective states coordinate educational workshops with, with agency partners to assist applications and licensees in compelling complying with contractor state license law and other business requirements. This goal was discussed with industry representatives at the July 6 meeting with CSLB. Those present at this meeting were supportive of the goal. Since then, registrar folk had reached out to the Joint Enforcement Strike Force and regarding this part, their participation and, and or assistance with future licensing workshops. The Joint Enforcement Strike Force is a partnership of California enforcement agencies, including CSLB, that work with others to co combat the under, underground economy in California. The group is chaired by the EDD Department. Employee Employment Development Department. EDD leadership has confirmed that they will include CSLB in their construction related education, educational seminars and workshops. Additionally, CSLB staff will, will participate in construction related seminars to discuss contractors, license requirements, and related subjects. CSLB's Public Affairs Office will be taking the lead in publicizing and coordinating CSLB enforcement staff participation at the EDD seminars. Public Affairs and enforcement staff will also be developing reg regularly scheduled webinars to assist licensees. Agency partners, partners will be invited to participate in planning and presenting these web webinars. Shelley. This is an informational item only, but is there any public comment? We do have a comment for a moment. No, no comments at this time. Is there any committee members that would like to speak on this? I'll say a couple words. There's none, no hands up. Um, yes, I, I attended that representative meeting on the July 6th with uh, board, board chair Mary Teichert. Um, the staff report is correct. There was a lot of industry experts who are in this field trying to, to tackle that underground economy. I think uh, any types of educational pieces that we can provide and and coordinate of other efforts that this will be a good thing. So uh, this is only an informational item only and um, just make sure before we move on any other you know, comments that I see no hands raised. Um, and a vote is not requested or needed for this. So we're going to move on. So we're moving on to items. 2.5 and then starting on page 17. Research the need to establish a public works enforcement unit unit to, to perform outreach to awarding agencies and coordinate public works investigations with compliance groups and government en entities to enforce contractor state license law requirements. Enforcement has made good progress on this objective. The goal was discussed with industry representatives at the July 6th meeting with CSLB. 
Additionally, CSOB staff recently met with compliance groups, including the Foundation for Fair Contracting, Operating Engineers, and others after research and further discussion. The consensus is that the creation of a dedicated public works unit is not necessary. Instead, the existing quality assurance unit, uh, QA, that work within the enforcement division can be augmented to give appropriate attention to public work investigators. This is achie achievable with, with four special investigator positions in the quality assurance units, which duties will include public works complaint investigations, dig alert complaint investigations related to the failure to call for utility markings prior to excavation, uh, this position was previously established through the budget change project progress. Electrician certification violations. Uh, this position was already uh, specially funded by C10 license renewal subcharge and media sensitive complaints and other special assignments. So this is the recommendation from staff to the enforcement committee. Uh, the committee may want to consider this an information only item, but as an option, the committee may want to make a motion to refer the matter to the full board with a recommendation to amend the strategic goal. A potential amendment would, would change the goal from research the need of a public works unit to dedicate four special investigators to, to work specific on public works complaints within the existing quality assurance un unit. So, uh, committee members, do you have any comments or suggestions or questions on, on this item? Uh, this is Susan, board member Granzella. I have a question on how we went from research to dedicating four special investigators. That seems very narrow as an objective. Uh, so uh, I was wondering how how we got to there and whether it doesn't seem to me necessary to bring that forward unless there was a specific reason to allocate four. Could we get some information on that? Sure, uh, Chair, Chair Mark. It's Dave Fudd, if I could comment on that. Great. Uh, what what we did is we we performed outreach to different compliance groups, and we also looked at the complaints that we'd received that related to public works. And so when we looked at the staff that we had that were already handling specified uh, investigations, such as dig alert and electrician certification, the thought was to take those that were already performing that work, put them under one supervisor, and cross train. So instead of the board objective was to um, research the need for a public works unit. And it's our belief that we do need dedicated investigators to work public works complaints because they're very specialized. And we did not want to in any way take staff away from consumer uh, filed complaints. So we're able to identify uh, three existing positions that were doing specialized functions. And the proposal is to put those in the quality assurance unit under a dedicated supervisor and cross train the staff to perform uh, different types of public works investigations, including the electrician certification, the dig alert. We also uh, identified a vacant position from the testing uh, center, from one of the testing centers. You know, as, as you know, the board had an objective to transition to PSI for exam administration, and that freed up a position that could be, uh, that we're proposing to move to the enforcement division and put in the quality assurance unit. So really the staff proposal is that we do think we need dedicated staff for public works investigations, uh, we can optimize the quality assurance unit by having the existing uh, the supervisor of that unit oversee these type of investigations. We just want to make sure that the enforcement committee is comfortable with this approach. Thank you. You know, I do think we we want to consider though a motion to the full board because, as uh, Member Granzel pointed out, this this is changing the original uh, objective from researching the need for it to coming to the recommendation that we absolutely need to have 
specified staff within an existing unit to perform these functions. All right, well, we'll take your, your recommendation. Thank you. And thank you, uh, Susan, for those comments. It's make sure I'm correct. It's my understanding that these are all job duties that are already being done with CSLB and the cross training will will allow to be to better help the consumers, including these, these agencies that are out there that is trying to tackle this underground economy as a whole. Right, Dave, is that pretty much the gist yeah, of it? That's absolutely correct. A lot of these referrals come from compliance investigators that have already done the, the groundwork. They've already performed their investigation. We're able to review the work that they've done and determine if, if that if their investigation warrants a disciplinary action against a licensee. Also, it has a, a it has the, it has the need to perform outreach to awarding agencies so they can better educate uh, uh, the, the contractors and also their compliance staff. As we heard earlier from Davi Rodriguez, there's a need to do that. And that's, and that's the benefit of having staff that are focused on this. And it doesn't take away from the consumer complaints. We're very careful with not letting that happen. And and I think that was the and I appreciate the staff's hard work on this strategic objective. It sounds like research was done and research concluded that a whole unit was might not be necessary, but there is uh, like an amendment to that strategic goal that staff is looking for where we can take it to the full board and sort of cross train some of these existing positions to um, better serve. California residents. Um, so what is the wishes of the committee? Yeah, hi, board member guy here. Yeah, I agree that the um, public work stuff is very specialized. So I think there should be uh, specialized positions. Um, and training for this, it's, it's very different than the consumer complaints, which seems to be the majority of um, the unlicensed activity I would think would exist in the consumer world. So I think it's a good idea. I just want to make sure it doesn't pull any positions away from, um, you know, the understaffed enforcement unit, you know, focusing on the consumer complaints. Board member Gonzalo, did you have a comment as well? No, I, I agree with uh, board member Guy. And I'm also having uh, issues with my computer where um, there's a delay. So uh, sorry about that. But anyway, um, I agree. Member Kobos also has a comment. Good morning. Thank you. So with, with having the, the dedicated four, is that, are we, how could it, are we limiting ourselves to, you know, if more are needed, what, what would have to take place? Does it have to come back before the committee or what, what happens if we do need more uh, staff on that? Well, we, we are always evaluating our workload, and this would be something that the consultant would also take into consideration. So this, in a way, will come back to you as to the need for additional staff. Uh, I can ask maybe uh, Steve Grove to comment a little bit on this, but what Steve, what Steve did is look very carefully at the workload that we're currently receiving, such as for the dig alert complaints. What are we getting from the awarding agencies? And you're correct. Uh, we could receive far more awarding agency complaints than we may be able to handle with the existing staff. So one of the ways we do manage that, though, is by being very clear with the compliance groups what our priorities are. An example being, we want to make sure the contractors are licensed. We don't want to uh, see where we have significant civil wage and penalty assessment violations occurring. But there are ways that we can manage that workload. And fortunately, we have a very strong working relationship with the compliance groups who support what we're doing. But you know, the short answer is, if there's a need for additional staff, we would bring that back. We would consider a budget change proposal to increase staffing if necessary. We just believe at this time that the four that we're proposing would be sufficient and really help us to get this off the ground. Uh, 
board member Kobus, does that answer your question? Yes, thank you, David. Okay, okay, committee members, it sounds like there is kind of the two options. Um, we can amend the strategic goal or keep this uh, informational item only. Um, uh, staff is looking to take this to the full board, refer the matter, and this is the motion that they're, they were seeking as an option. So we have kind of the two options, consider it an information item only, or with the research that was done for the strategic goal, amend this strategic goal. Um, so a potential amendment would change the goal from a research in need of the public work works unit to dedicate four special investigators to work specific public works complaints with the existing quality assurance unit. So uh, if, if that's the case, then we would need a, a, a motion for a proposal recommendation to amend this enforcement strategic goal 2.5. Mr. Chair, I move to amend the motion. Um, uh, to, to clarify, okay. I was board member Kobos, and your motion is to approve uh, a recommendation to the full board to amend the enforcement strategic goal 2.5. Exactly, as you stated. Is there a second? I will second the motion. This is Susan Granzella. All right, we have a, a first and a second. Um, any other committee co member comments? Seeing none, can we get a roll call? I'm sorry, member Mark, did we want to do public comment on this one? Uh, appreciate that, Shelley. Is there any public comment? There is. We have a comment from Davi Rodriguez. Davi, your, your line is unmuted. You may proceed. You'll have three minutes. Uh, yes. Uh, do I have them? Am I unmuted now? You are. Okay. Um, yeah, on this, as it mentioned earlier, I did make a bunch of complaints about, you know, one municipality, and I've noticed that there is many municipalities doing uh the same thing mm -hmm. and uh what was amazing is that um mm -hmm. the uh city councils and their attorneys city attorneys and said they they don't believe in it mm -hmm. they don't believe in contractors state license law for certain things they just or they don't want to and uh thing is when the board uh outreaches to these municipalities and 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 advises them then uh then maybe the municipalities don't award contracts to 10 or 20 unlicensed contractors so the board's effort is uh you know uh, exponential in that regard so it's a worthy enterprise and um <clears throat> i also would have to say that after uh, I made such a stink about that that um, at least one municipality got very creative in their effort. And uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Rod his... Mr. Rodriguez, this is uh, Enforcement Chair Mark. Is is this co public comment in, re in relation to this uh, motion in second? And uh, I'm I'm sorry, I didn't. I didn't hear that. Is this is this public comment in relation to the motion in the second on the floor on enforcement strategic goal two point five? I, I I didn't. It, it I sounded it like about, it was. It sounded like your. It sounds like your public comment is referencing what you stated earlier during general public comment. Right now, we're 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 seeking public comment on. Enforcement strategic goal 2.5 that was uh, there's a motion in a second on the floor. So, oh, I see it seems to have altered a bit. Sorry. Okay, thank. Thank you. Yeah. Shelly, is there any other public comment on enforcement strategic goal 2.5? Uh, do we have a we have a comment from James Alvarez? James, I've unmuted your line. You have three minutes for your comment. I 
Am I on? You are. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, I had a question. Uh, does the board plan on expanding its exemptions from license year to uh, closer to the the national average or to uh, the re uh, reciprocity states? Because I know Nevada and most of the other states have a higher exemption. And I had one more final question. Uh, does the board plan on allowing open book testing or online testing similar to the reciprocity states that allow that to promote more licensed professionals? Those were my only two questions. It's a little off subject, sorry. Sorry about that. Thank you. And with that, there's no further questions. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Jones, if you provide your information in the chat, someone from staff can get back to you. Um, and, and usually those type of questions are usually at the beginning of the meeting for public comment, as well as if there's any uh, additional items on the agenda. Um, so I think since there's no other public comment, can we get a roll call, please? Michael Mark. Mm -hmm. Yes. Rodney Kobos. Aye. Susan Granzella. Aye. Yeah, I can send him all the information. Alan Guy. Looks like there's a financial Aye. injury to us. Jacob oh Lopez. Foster Cover. Aye. Looks like it passes to bring it to the full board. Thank you. Okay. Moving onward, so uh, the final strategic goal that we'll, we will be addressing at this enforcement committee meeting is strategic plan item 2.6, and that update begins on page 18 of your packet. The goal states this, continue to enforce, enforce workers' compensation insurance requirements to protect consumers and workers and scrutinize licensees who self-certify they have no employees. So on page 18. So this goal was discussed with industry representatives at the July 6th meeting. Um, those present strongly supported the strict enforcement of workers' compensation insurance requirements and appreciate the continuing efforts by CSLB. On July 20th, 2022, Enforcement Division held a state, statewide supervisors meeting. The issue of workers' compensation insurance was discussed and the importance of enforcing insurance requirements, requirements was emphasized. The supervisors were also reminded that the maximum civil penalty for filing a false exemption from workers' compensation insurance was recently increased from $5,000 to $30,000 thanks to CSLB sponsored Assembly Bill 569. That concludes the update of Enforcement Division strategic goals. And with that, we have completed all the agenda items scheduled for today. Uh, committee members, do you have any final comments or suggestions? Seeing no hands raised. Shelly, is there any additional public comment? There are none. All right. Do I have a motion to ad adjourn this enforcement committee? So moved by Kobos. Motion by Kobos. Second by Guy. Second by Guy. Thank you. We are now adjourned. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you, Chair Mark. Thank <laughs> you.